Hey, what's going on summoners? My name is Crumbs and today we're going to be taking a look at some different wave control techniques. Wave management as a whole is something that truly defines League of Legends. Sure, you can mechanically outplay the enemy every time, but knowing how to manage your wave can easily be the difference between a win or a loss. Pros and high-level coaches spend hours creating documents and guides for complex methods of managing waves. This level of intricacy won't be found in today's video, but we will be covering some of the strongest fundamentals needed for proper wave management, as well as a few key tricks to improve your play. Enough talk, let's dive right into the video and start you on your road to mastering wave management. Starting us off strong, we've got the technique of fast pushing waves. This is a relatively simple skill to learn. If you're looking to shove a wave, you're going to want to use your abilities and damage to hit the entire wave. While there's not necessarily a specific minion to focus, you can basic attack melee so their frontline dies faster and you can shove a bit better. The overall goal of this tactic is to kill the enemy minions as quickly as possible. If you have an ability that does AoE damage, we recommend trying to hit an enemy champion as you shove the wave so you can incorporate some free poke while you push. Why would you want to do this, you may ask? Well, there are a ton of reasons, such as creating a quick rotation window or simply wanting to recall for an item. That being said, the most generic one is to force the wave to return to a neutral state as quickly as possible. That is, assuming the enemy is there to catch it. If they're not and the wave is able to fully crash, congrats, it's now bouncing and coming back towards you. We'll be covering why that's important later on in the video. For now, just keep this simple tactic in mind because it is one of the strongest wave setup tools in your arsenal. Before we continue on to our next big wave manipulation technique, we want to remind you all to check us out at ProGuides.com. We offer tons of guides and videos like this to help you take your gameplay to the next level. If courses and lessons aren't your thing though, don't worry, we have challenger level coaches that are available 24-7 ready to help you out. So what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the Pro Guides family. Nonetheless, let's not waste any more time and dive back into the video. Here we have one of the most important wave management tools in the entire game. That's right summoners, we're talking about freezing waves. And no, we don't actually mean freezing them. Sorry Anivia. When it comes to freezing waves, the overall goal is to keep the wave state exactly where it is. There are a ton of benefits to this and it offers a versatile way to play. Before we talk about how to use a frozen wave to your advantage, let's actually dive into how you can freeze wave yourself. From a basic point of view, freezing waves is nothing more than making sure the enemy has more minions than you. Unfortunately, it's not always that simple. In order to properly freeze waves, you're going to want to count the minions you have compared to the enemies. Depending on where you want to freeze the wave, you'll need the enemy to have a minion advantage. To dive into this further, let's break the lane up into four segments. In the middle of the lane, we'll call that segment zero because it is the neutral wave state and that means the wave will not move to either side without being influenced. This is naturally where minion waves will crash and if you're looking to hold a freeze here, you need to have the exact same amount of minions as the enemy or else it'll shove towards you. So, if this is the wave stay you want for whatever reason, try to keep the minion amounts equal. If the enemy has 4 minions, you need to have 4 minions. If they quickly kill all 4, you need to quickly kill all 4. There's nothing to it, and in lower ranks this is likely where the wave state will sit since both sides are constantly shoving waves. Next we have segment 1, which is gonna be right next to the neutral wave state segment. This wave state is an easy spot to freeze and it offers a bit of safety from ganks, but it isn't the best place to hold the wave if your overall goal is to play safe. In order to hold the wave here, you need the enemy to have one more minion than you. Again, if the enemy has 5 minions, you need to have 4. If they suddenly start trying to shove the wave, you'll need to match their damage in order to keep the wave there. More often than not, this means you need to reactively damage minions whenever the enemy does. Once you get used to doing so, you'll be able to do this freeze with ease. Afterwards, we've got segment 2, which is going to be closer to your tower. This is one of the best freezes to learn in the game as it's easy to hold and puts the enemy in an extremely dangerous position. Whether you're looking to freeze defensively or aggressively, this specific location is key to climbing and should be something you practice regularly. This segment requires the enemy to have two additional minions compared to your wave. Just like the previous segments, you'll want to match their damage to ensure that they don't force a crash. 
The reason this segment is so powerful is that it allows room for error while still keeping you in a strong position. If you accidentally kill one of the extra minions, the wave will start pushing back, but you can still fight for a freeze and look to hold it in segment 1. If the enemy shoves a bit too hard and now has one extra minion that you can't deal with, you can now work on freezing in our next segment. In segment 3, this is the closest freeze you can possibly get to your turret. It is incredibly hard to hold since you'll need to make sure the enemy has 3 more minions than your wave. Alongside this, sometimes you'll get minions that simply just run into your turret's range. This can significantly alter your wave state which doesn't help with simplicity. Holding a freeze at segment 3 is the strongest place you can possibly keep a wave. It puts the enemy in an extremely dangerous position and keeps you as safe as possible since the enemy would have to tank tower shots in order to kill you. Holding the wave here requires a lot of thought and skill, but with enough practice, anyone can do it. Now that we've gotten the basics of freezing out of the way, let's talk about how to use freezing a wave defensively. In losing matchups, of course, it's going to be difficult to be able to touch the wave without dying. Well, in a lot of cases, you can trim the wave enough to be able to freeze it at your turret. Holding a wave near your tower not only protects you from ganks, but it also puts the enemy in a dangerous position. If they're unable to crash the wave, you're now free to farm in the safest position there is. From here, you can try to keep the wave frozen as long as possible so you can scale up until you can fight. Not to mention that your jungler now has an ideal gank since the enemy is forced to be pushed up or else they'll miss experience. Once the enemy dies or is forced to recall, you can either keep the freeze or quickly shove the wave and reset. Using freezing as a defensive tactic is a powerful tool that pros abuse all the time. Their entire game plan revolves around getting control of the wave state so that they can safely secure a freeze, thus securing them a safe early game. But freezing isn't always about playing safe. At its peak usage, freezing is one of the most oppressive tools in the game. Let's take a look at how you can use freezing a wave aggressively. If you're stomping your matchup, you can use freezing in order to put the enemy in a terrible spot. Depending on your lead, you can actually bait this and 2v3 the jungler, which further solidifies the enemy bot lane's fate. Holding a freeze like this while communicating with your own jungler is also beneficial. Sure, you can ask them for a gank, but there's a far better alternative. With how far ahead you are, you can zone the enemy off enough to begin a slow push. As you build the wave up, you can ask your jungler and or mid laner for a dive. As the massive wave crashes, you dive and kill the enemy bot lane. From here, they can never recover. They've lost countless waves from your freeze and just lost a ton of gold and experience from a slow push and dive. Oh, and we haven't even covered slow pushing yet. Well, let's do that next. But before we move on, let's not forget about our favorite pro guides tradition. Today we want to ask you all, if you could go back and tell yourself something when you first started League, what would it be? Mm, that's a tough question. Maybe start watching your VODs, that's always very helpful. But that's my take, and we want to hear from you, and regardless of what your answer may be, let us know in the comment section down below. Nonetheless, let's get back into the video. Finally, we've got our last primary wave control technique of slow pushing waves. Slow pushing waves offers a lot of power because of the amount of time it provides. Basically, when you slow push a wave, the enemy is forced to stay under their turret farming or they will miss out on a ton of gold and experience. This means you can use this free time for a few important things. You can go get aggressive vision in the enemy jungle to avoid ganks or simply know their pathing. As previously mentioned, you can use it to set up dives so that the enemy loses a lot of resources. If you're a roaming champion, you can take this time to go look for a potential gank. Or you can even take a free recall since the enemy won't be able to crash the wave before you return, which means you lose no minions. Overall, slow pushing waves offers a ton of support and power in terms of providing time for plays. We only listed a few of the most obvious examples, but there are a ton more like it, giving free rotation timers to dragons, invades, or just letting you harass the enemy under the tower. To properly slow push the wave, you're going to want to make sure you have a minion advantage over the enemy. While it's not as complex as freezing a wave, you'll simply want to always have more minions than the enemy. The closer to your turret that you start the slow push, the larger it will be when it crashes. To secure a slow push, you'll want to harass the enemy in order for the minions to focus you and for the enemy to not hit the wave in order to trim it. The best way to slow push a wave is to focus on killing the enemy casters rather than the enemy melee minions as you shove. 
This is because the melees are far tankier and will make the wave slowly push towards the enemy rather than quickly crashing into the turret. Slow pushing is still a difficult skill to learn because you have to learn patience and practice juggling minion aggro with harassing the enemy, but don't worry, it'll come with time. You now have the knowledge of the fundamental wave states needed to climb. Be sure to combine these tactics in order to truly take your skills to the next level. Before we finish the video, we've got a few great tricks for you guys that are used by high level players and require a bit of practice, but are definitely worth it. First up, we've got the art of counting waves. This simple strategy requires you to, well, count the waves. Every three waves, a canyon minion will spawn, which makes the wave significantly tankier. These are often the best waves to take recalls on. Properly counting waves means you'll plan ahead and start a slow push that will crash as the third wave spawns. Because of the cannon minion, you're given far more time for a free recall. Next, we have knowing what each wave does after it crashes. Simply put, the wave will crash, bounce, then slow push back to you. Let's take a look at the actual breakdown of each wave. You will crash the first wave into the turret, and the second will work as a buffer. The third wave will finally cause a bounce back towards you, and the fourth will slow push. From here, you can plan what you want to do with the fifth wave. You can either freeze it or turn it into a slow push back towards the enemy. And that wraps up our video for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to join our Pro Guides family over at ProGuides.com where we offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you just won't catch anywhere else. So stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. As always, good luck on the Rift and may the LP God smile down upon you.